checking out the manure pit here. It got a little late in the year for us, but we're still working at hauling manure. This pit is a semi-solid pit. I treat it a little different than some other guys do. Uh, we bed very heavy in the dairy barn with straw and bedding materials for under the cows. So as you see down in there, there's a lot of, we'll say, strawy stuff. But with some leaching of the manure, so to say, and just through natural rainfall, we get a little bit of water in there. So we use what's called a vacuum tanker, kind of a pump set up to suck off the juice, the liquid, and all that on certain fields. And then we come in with the skid loader and the big bee spreader, and we load out the rest of the solids and haul it out to the field and spread it out for the crops. So that's kind of the gist of how this works. So. We're supplying this manure here at about four to five thousand gallons to the acre. Uh, we had put a little solid manure on prior to this, and the uh, requirements for what this field needs for nutrients is a little higher, so we're adding a little bit more, so to say. The four to five thousand gallons to the acre is the equivalent of less than a quarter of an inch of rain coming down on this right now. So it is very small in terms of runoff. So this manure here that we're applying, your base nutrients are gonna be your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. A manure is loaded with what we call micronutrients. Sulfur, zinc, manganese, uh, calcium, there's a handful of other ones in there. And then you have the biological component of it, if I say it that way, where you have all the natural biology or microorganisms in the manure itself that greatly benefit the soil. So I think I've said this once before but it's kind of a vicious cycle. We haul all these this manure out here to feed the crops. And we haul the crops back to the cattle, feed it to the cattle, which turn it back into manure, which now we're hauling it back out. And you know all the while we're producing milk and meat and corn and beans and hay and wheat and all of that. And it all is one big interweave mess. The straw residue that you see out here, there is some manure in front of us, but actually what's underneath that is the rolled rye. This field was pumpkins this previous year. So you can see some bits of pumpkin pieces scattered out here that were left over from the field, and then all the straw residue. We will no-till our corn into this crop or to this field next year. We won't do anything to this other than no-till directly into it in spring. We gotta hurry up and get done here. I gotta haul this load. I'd like to get a load of solids out yet quick at two o'clock, which is about a half hour, 40 minutes. I've got a Cedar Creek Farmers meeting. We gotta, or we gotta attend yet this afternoon. Uh, and then we'll come back and haul some more manure probably afterwards. But that's um, a typical day. I always got something going on. We apply the manure based on what the crop needs or will utilize every year. So corn is probably our highest usage and our best placement of manure. So all our corn ground, that's where it's gonna be corn for 2025 here, is getting gonna get manure. We're aiming for around 15 ton to the acre. to have some kind of a budget, an idea. The grant dollars don't exactly follow this, but that's okay. We need a roll, if you guys remember if we were in it from the beginning, we were running grants every other year. Vote in. Like, just like Farm Bureau, Ross. Yep. All in favor of Jake being president, say aye. 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 I hear ayes, any against? None. Jake, you're president of the Cedar Creek Farmers. Bed packs, they get kind of, uh, they make heat. I kind of feel a little bad cleaning them out right now. The cattle can lay on them and make a little warmth. It makes a little warmth when they lay on it, but they got too deep on us. Cleaned them out kind of early this year, uh, early October, and uh, we had a wetter late fall, and we just had to use a lot of straw to keep them dry. So now we got to get out, get them cleaned out once more before it gets too late in the winter, or otherwise they'll build up too thick over winter.
that other spreader is a tank spreader. It's made from liquids. This spreader here can handle liquids to an extent. I mean, it'll, it'll haul it. Usually, it'll be efficient. This is made for a semi-solid or solid manure. This spreader. Um, there's two big augers in the bottom that are pushing the manure up to what we call the expeller on the side, which is what's throwing that manure about 100 feet out and uh, spreading it pretty evenly across the field. We'll put 100 and, or probably 200, 200 maybe plus loads of manure through this spreader every year. So it's that simple. Now we sit and unload. Break that up between three pens. I'm oh. actually putting a little more down to get a good base on them. <laughs> We've been cleaning these out the last couple days here. We cleaned out, started on the far end, and we're working our way down the line. Didn't want these these two today, that one today yet, and the one one down further yesterday, and the one the day before that. Get them cleaned out, get them hauled. So, get it spread away, put it back on the field so it can grow a crop next year. 